using an on-off switch is quite convenient to turn on slash off your load but this might be an overkill if your load is a couple of LEDs or just a buzzer unfortunately using a push button on its own doesn't seem a cheap replacement for the on-off switch however there is a trick that we can use to solve this problem with the help of 555 timer in this video we are going to have a look at this 555 timer based latch circuit explain its working principle and test its power consumption when it's used to convert a push button into an on-off switch we have a lot to cover today so what are we waiting for get ready and let's start our video Before talking about 555 timer latch circuit, I want to let you know that more awesome application implemented using 555 timer will be shared with you in the next video. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you can stay tuned. Alright, now let's carry on. In order to make a push button act as an on-off switch, we need something that stores the state of the switch and switches polarity once a push button is pressed. In this case, the first thing that may come to your mind is LED circuit, which exists in 555 timer IC. From the circuit diagram shown, when a potential difference is applied to the circuit, while the button is not pressed, half the applied voltage will appear at this node, due to the voltage divider. And the series 5 kilo ohm resistors of the 555 timer will divide the applied voltage at these nodes to 2 VCC over 3 and VCC over 3. After having the input voltage of these comparators, we can predict their behavior. Note that the working principle of comparators is explained in open based oscillator episode. For more details, please follow the link in the card over here. Alright, now let's move on. According to the comparator's inputs, both comparators will output logic 0. So we will have both set and reset are zeros, which will lead Q bar to be logic 1. And the output is inverted. So we have logic 0 at the output. Now let the game begin. When the push button is pressed, the capacitor will start charging. And at that instant, the voltage at this node will drop to 0. Now let's see how the comparators will react to this change. This comparator will give us logic 0, and the other one will give us logic 1. So the values of S and R are as follows. This will lead Q bar to be 0, and the output will be 1. At this state, if the push button is kept pressed, the capacitor will be charged to 2.5V, which is the voltage of this node. So now, the values of S and R are both 0. The values of S and R are both zeros. Just like the previous state, but now the latch will keep its value, which is logic 1, because the reset hasn't been triggered yet. Of course, releasing the push button doesn't have any effect on the latch state. So, the state is kept as long as there is no change occurs to the circuit. Now notice that the capacitor is charged from the 555 timer output, which is theoretically 5V. Now when pressing on the push button again, the capacitor will be discharged through this path, rising the voltage at this node to be 5V for a very short amount of time. At this instant, the comparator's outputs are going to be logic 1 and logic 0, which means that the latch reset will be triggered, changing the latch value from logic 1 to logic 0. Q bar will be logic 1, and the inverted output will be logic 0. So we could return to our initial state. One last note is that make sure to choose a low capacitor value to ensure fast response. Alright, now it's time to put everything on a breadboard and test the circuit with some different loads. I just want to mention that I've tried to run a motor using this circuit, but none of my trials were successful. We can see that when the circuit output is zero, the current consumption is around 2.3 milliamps. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about useful electronics. Thank you for being with me today and stay tuned.